Our third strategy is going to be the top down. And again, it's um, the parts are related to each other to a single point of failure a sketch. In the, I probably automatically opened a part, so I don't see any of my assembly tools. I do want to be in an assembly, so file new. Assembly. It was defaulting to, um, to the millimeters, grams, and seconds. I have my start command when uh, starting a new assembly, so we'll just cancel, hopefully. All right, so we'll X out of that. Uh, we're going to generate the uh, the same sketch because I have those. Maybe I'll save myself a little bit of time by going over. And then here is our, our structure anyway. So here's the multi-body part that is the parent. And, um, and then the, um, the gasket, dash M, the cover plate, those are the solid bodies within. And then the PC-M is the assembly that was generated all based on that one. All right, so if I control C and we come over to the assembly and I pick um, the front plane and control V. And then while we're doing this, we'll go ahead and grab the top control C and go into the top plane and control V. That all looks pretty good. So did my dimensions come in? Everything pretty much came in. So let's drag that off and away a little bit. It looks like I lost one relation. So two lines collinear, line and a point uh, coincident, and two points are vertical. Vertical. Either, either way will, either of the three ways will get you there. And then our sketch two, and we'll drag it back, and that all looks pretty good. All right, so very first thing, before we create any external references through a solid body or through a uh, component, in this case, we want to save this. So this is going to be my, uh, my PC for top down. Pressure cylinder top down. If I don't save this first, it's going to be tied to assembly one or assembly five, whatever I, I created it. And then this is going to be the layout. Now we have the layout up here, which we'll discuss later on. Um, it basically creates a 3D sketch, and there's some limitations, and I'm still going to tell you guys to hold off on the 3D sketches until you have a really good handle on the relations and everything that's going on in our standard process. So the layout top. And uh, once I start generating components, any additional sketches that I make, I believe go to the bottom. So if we do this first, then those will stay up top and uh, become, part of, um, become part of the feature tree as parents. All right, so under insert components is new part. And it is asking me for a plane, whichever plane I select, that becomes the front plane. If I just click, it clears that out, and um, I don't want to uh, be, you know, whatever the, the plane is in the part, it's the same as the assembly anyway. So this is going to be the chamber base. All right, and when I edit this, now I'm editing the part in context. This goes to blue. All of my items are in blue. Any of the other uh, parts would be in uh, transparency. So we need to open up a sketch on the front plane. We will can still do the convert, and I want to make sure not to get that circle, so we can convert those and feature we'll go with the revolve notice everything's kind of shifted over a little bit because of the in context and we can go ahead and save or oh, accept it and <laughs> save. and then uh, we would put the holes in and go ahead and accept this and i want to move this one along a little bit so we can hide that component kind of like what we did with the other one except 
it's uh, less chance that it's going to be external reference back to the part it should go to the sketch but one way to make sure is to hide those items as we go okay and then our center line for rotation oh and I did the most common thing is I am in the sketch and usually it pops up with a little box warning me you are sketching in the assembly just like we did the layouts and it's going to place that down below. I need to make sure to create a new part, do the little checkbox, and then name it basket. And then we are going to edit the gasket, edit the part. Front plane, sketch, and we get into that. I can do the little rectangle thing. We'll put the center line on. And go into the features. Revolve 360 degrees around line 5. Okay, it grabbed one of those. I thought I did a... Um... Yeah, okay, I guess that was line 5. Kind of threw me there for a second and we would put the holes in and complete that one out but i'm more on interested in the process at this point so if i do the little greater than symbol that will help me manage those height show and one more time new part and check and we'll name that the cover plate now at this point these little Brackets mean that everything is internal to this assembly. They do not exist outside of the assembly. We would have to export those or save them, save them out. Um, you know, and again, the um, and there's kind of a natural element. This could be well, one one component is a part, not really an assembly. Uh, so somewhere two to about seven stays in the multi-body. Um, three to about 20 makes a good sub-assembly. Somewhere between 15 and 20 parts, the assembly becomes complicated enough and errors start to generate themselves or it becomes harder to keep track of. And you would want to um, kind of say one more part doesn't really help and making it into a sub-assembly and driving other components are breaking it up a little bit. It's a better way to organize it. So the front plane will go into the sketch, do the rectangle. So it also works out that the drawings are manageable up to about 20 sheets. So somewhere in, in that range, the file um, uh, gets big enough at the same time that the subassembly is um, doing, uh, doing its thing. And it just is a way of managing your data and being uh, aware of what's going on with, uh, with all of these different components and trying to manage and things get overlooked and that error checking becomes a lot, uh, a lot harder. But we're also building in some intelligence that um, uh, since these are all tied to the same sketches, so what I'm doing now, adding the 10 millimeter holes I would have done to the other parts and they're all driven out of this sketch and to this part. All right, so each of these turn blue. When I'm done, I uncheck the edit component. We show all of those guys and because I'm already in the assembly, my material becomes plain carbon steel. I did not add the neoprene, so at least I don't think I did. Well, we have a basic rubber, so edit material. We'll collapse the steels. Go rubber, neoprene, apply, and close. And then it adds it to the mix. And then this one, the material, plain carbon steel. All right, we had pretty good luck with our last one. Oh yeah, we would uh, also want to clean up after ourselves and hide those sketches. And we had pretty good luck with this guy and third millimeter. All right, so again, the choice is if I accept, I can go through and click 
probably about as easy as doing the component pattern. It's a little bit of a toss up there. Let me make sure to save it and rebuild. And this is where save internally inside of the assembly. If I say don't show again, then uh, I will have to go back and select these and say to save externally. If I say save externally now, it creates the three parts. We already have the assembly and it has these little greater than dash greater thans uh, pointing us back to the geometry that the layout front and the layout top that exists inside of the assembly. So we have those, those references. All right, and then we'll go new exploded view. And maybe I'll go this way this time. Make sure I'm getting the, um, the hexes and not my orbit. And then we'll pull Y out some distance. And maybe go 150 and done. Did it take the 150 or did it stay at? 100 and, no, took 150. All right, and then the next one, since I am not, oh, it went somewhere. Oh, it added it to that one since I, uh, I went back into it, so done. Let's drag that one out some distance, and we'll go 100. And, nope, don't need an extra decimal in there, so done. And then the last one we can go, let's say 50. And done. All right, so same number of parts, same, uh, same basic um, process. Um, I uh, already had the, the sketches. So get, get where you can use the copy and paste effectively, that's a good way to go. Um, make sure that's saved and then we don't have to do the, um, the selecting the bodies or filtering out for the bodies when we're doing this guy. We can bring in the isometric directly, hit OK. We'll bring in the, um, the collapse, the current, or the, um, yeah, let's go isometric. All right, well, now we're kind of back to where we were starting. Yeah, that might be a little big back to where we were starting when uh, we did the uh, the bottom up. All right, so the the alignment thing again, we'll break alignment. If it doesn't have a line, then we can align horizontal by origin, by centers, those kind of things. And we're ready for the bill of materials, ready for the additional three sheets to go through and, and detail our parts. All right, so different, um, different strategies, advantages to each. Uh, anybody that tells you how fast top-down is, understand that it is fast, but it also comes with those external references that if you tie, just like multi-body, if you tie um, parts to parts rather than parts to sketches or parts to, uh, or features to, uh, to sketches, then it becomes uh, a little more complicated if I had to remove this one and this is tied to that, there's a little bit of an issue. So watch out for those potential errors and try to have one place to make the changes because in this, um, let's say I wanted to go to 100 and, uh, 120. I go to the layout for the front and since I didn't have my um, center line, I changed that to 60, I changed that to 75, Probably not going to affect anything else, but uh, height, height wasn't so critical to save it. We'll stay with the internal, but everything updates, 120, 120. And so those changes, rather than opening up three parts and having to make those changes across three different parts, now I'm making them at one location. And let's see, if we go to 90 and rebuild we're going to see those holes move out and all the hexes move with it so it's um you know ties it together gives us another tool and there's really a lot of horsepower here but it requires that you have that good understanding of all of these internal external relationships <laughs>